India being home to estimated 97,700 children in Taipan. That is 2012. Today, there are more than 1,50,000 or more than that. Few days back, when I spoke to chairman of uh, Life for a Child, he said maximum number of children with diabetes who need insulin are in India. So we have to reach out to them to do that, and that's why I felt I should. Diagnosing in 70s when the child has symptoms. Has it changed? Diagnostic tools, has it changed? Yes. Monitoring, has it changed tremendously? Changing pattern of glucose. Type 1 diabetes is as heterogeneous as type 2. Don't think type 1 diabetes is 1. If you talk about heterogeneity of type 1, it will be another 4 hours talk. Management. You are the doctor, you treat how my child should say. The whole thing has shifted to self-management. Blood sugar estimation, taking insulin, or everything. Insulins, from what we had, not my generation, Dr. Munchadapas, Vishwanathan and all, only plain insulin three times a day. Life was much better. Maybe I think it was eight rupees per vial, 16 rupees when I was an undergraduate. Today you have 2,500 rupees insulin. Is it better? I don't know. You need a better doctor or a better driver or a better car. Mercedes Benz with a bad driver is worse than Maruti with a good driver or an ambassador, where we learned. Complication, acute or chronic, how do you diagnose, how do you treat? Most important, prevention. 50 years back, don't worry, in 50 years, 30 years, diabetes will be gone. We'll have vaccines. We'll put it in tomato, we'll have in potato. There will be no type 1 diabetes. It has not realized so many years. I gave a talk 40 years back about type 1 diabetes cyclosporin, and one old man came. Very good talk, Prasan Kumar. You must have passed your DM recently. Yes, sir. Okay, don't worry. This is all ornamental knowledge. Nothing will happen next 40 years. Not so angry. Who is this old man? Sir, he is giver geese. What Guy Varghi said, 80, it is true today also. It was an ornamental talk only. See, a man of so much of knowledge and wisdom had a vision. Your talk is only ornamental. Nothing will happen. Today you think you have read a book and journal and say that prevention of diabetes and all that. Of course, epigenetics. And the incidence is rising by 3%. And in some countries, it is by 6%, Western countries. And again, 90,000 children in Europe. Maybe now, more than 1,50,000 children are newly detected in the world. This is the map all of you have seen 2019. As you can see here, India is a place, oh, can't see, anyway. India is a place where you will see that it is blue less than five. 10 years back, I got a call. Sir, I am the head of IDF at last. I saw your article. I think that prevalence is good. I said, who are you? I am from UK. Where did you read my article? It was in GMA, Journal of Indian Medical Association. What is the impact value? 0 0.4 or 0 0.04. See, I said I am shocked. Who will read GMA? But he saw that there are where they said India 20 per lakh, 30 per lakh cities and all. They said this is what we true. Only Karnataka by capture, recapture for 15 years. What is this in today? You can see that the map is same. Again, if you see no estimate made, Africa and certain parts are still same. It has not changed. There's no data. And when you see 20 years back, 
in Cameroon, if a child is detected with diabetes, chance of leaving that child six months is hardly 5%, or even less than that. Today, the scene has changed because of paradigm shift. Now, this is what in North Europe and others, 4 to 41%, 20, 25% in some of the countries like Switzerland, Finland, Norway, and UK and Sardinia. In contrast, China says that they have 0.1% of the case. It is up to you to believe it or not. Presentation is changing. If you see how newly diagnosed diabetes, as I told you, every child I saw in 70s, admitted to government hospital, ketosis, you come and see, manage them. And after some days, you ask them to take lent and plain insulin, whether it's mixed, whatever. There was no premix also in 1970s. It came later on. And you take insulin twice a day. That's all what it was. Now, a new environmental factor may be responsible for the absolute increase in patient presenting with DKA, while older etiology, genetic environmental, are responsible for steady, unchanging number of patients with a more severe presentation. Why it is decreasing or increasing? One of the hypotheses, we have heard so many things. One of the hypotheses is why it is high in countries in north, less here, probably environment. At least my generation, born six or seven decades back, we had all sorts of infection in the world, parasitic, infective, damn everything, whatever is possible for a child. So we have developed probably antibodies. Look at our children, better environment, cleaner one, and nobody drinks water from tap, which we were doing even in high school also. So we had all this, so, so many antibodies and all that. That is why the incidence is less in Africa and Asia, whereas in Europe, cleaner environment, they are not exposed to all these infections. That's why they are prone. This is one of the hypotheses, may be true, may not. Greater awareness of diabetes in children is not the factor contributing to earlier diagnosis before DKA. This is one aspect, believe it or not. There was a paper where they saw 100 consecutive patients. We will not admit anybody. We will manage it. 98% were managed without admission. Whereas in our days, what is their task? Tell professor, he's a diabetic child. First thing is admit. Why? Teach him how to take insulin. Teach him how to do blood sugar. Those days, not even that urine sugar. Ask him to get one hypoglycemia and then say how to treat hypoglycemia. Today, it is criminal to induce somebody hypoglycemia. I want to teach you how to get hypoglycemia. Right? Educate the parents. Today, last 12 years, I have not admitted a single patient. Forget type 1, even endocrine case also. Everything outpatient. Some of them, of course, were seen by hospital, then referred to me. So walking, talking, healthy patients come to clinic. Or even somebody comes with 400, 500. Not ketoacidosis. Ketone body is 1 plus 2 plus. You don't have to worry. Start three doses, it will disappear. Now, when we talk about this, whether the prevalence of DK at or near type 1 diagnosis has increased from 2010 to 16 following the high but stable prevalence observed from 2002 to 2010. Data is different 2010 to 2022. Increase does not seem to be attributable to changes in distribution of socio-demographic factors over time. So what you saw, the idea of chart as such. This is, I think, Eisenbach's one, maybe modified later, how 100% beta cell, immune dysregulation, environmental triggers. Then you have got five different types of antigen, which can produce antibodies, significant, insignificant, loss of first phase, glucose intolerance, and loss of free peptide. Unfortunately, we see at the end of it. If you have to prevent, you have to start here, recognize early, where there is a window of opportunity, where I can interfere. There is no point in, at the end, where it is too little, too late that you are doing. These are all the antibodies. This is all theory, 1970s GAD antibody. We had no method of estimation. Till recently, we could not even afford all of our patients. Let us say Dr. Sarda has got 1,500, I have 3,300. Where is the question of doing it? 99% don't have these antibodies. This is what some of these studies, uh, smaller studies, North India, South India, East and West varies. GAD antibody was seen in 45%. If you see, 
and then in 23, 42%, and both of them were seen in 33% or 45%. So depending on that, the situation, whether GAD is positive or IA2 antibodies, islet cells, so many things. Because of that, we thought, let us do one small study. This is what we did. And myself, Dr. Shiva Prasad, prevalence of GAD and zinc transporter rate and IA2 were 64, 31, 19%. That was in newly recognized 45%. So what is it we said? Zinc transporter rate complements GAD antibody and increases the diagnostic sensitivity for detection of autoimmune in type 1 diabetes. Inclusion of zinc transporter rate increases proportion of patients with antibody for nearly 80%. And we failed. Islet cell antibody is really not necessary. Long time we thought, let me do GAD. If it is negative, maybe type 2. No, unless you do all the antibodies, telling that because even if you don't have all this, it's not necessary every patient spending thousands of rupees. Today I have a technology where within 20 minutes I can do GAD antibody C-peptide. C-peptide may be most useless test when you detect that. This is what it is, please remember. GAD antibody may be present 40-50% like this. Unless you do all the antibodies, it's not going to make sense at all. This is what you have learnt as it is, point of care, just what time it takes, HbA1c, we can do GAD and C-peptide. I hope in future if we have zinc transporter rate, I would rather do that. And it hardly costs 700. So if there is a poor patient, I told all over Karnataka, you send in a number of samples, all these I will do free. People think it's very simple that there are children, you give insulin, everybody will be controlled. No. There are three clusters of blood sugar that they have identified. Just like type 2 diabetes, Dr. Mohan, and SA cluster A, B, C, D, E, and all that, depending on phenotype, genotype. Here, we are depending only on blood sugar. If you carefully look at your patients, type 1, you will see all these pattern. Cluster 1, this is a study, 141, that is 60% experience severely high blood levels during the day, low incidence of hypoglycemia, and lowest overall Variability in levels, always high. Next cluster two, 22% had severe high blood sugar overnight, a moderate incidence of hypoglycemia during day, about four episodes, and moderate variability overall. What is the third cluster three? Less, 17% had moderately high blood sugar most of the time, alternating with high incidence of hypoglycemia, eight per day, and highest overall variability during both day and night. We have seen these children, five years. You will never be able to control them. Whether two doses, three doses, whatever you do, even some patients on pump. I remember 20 years back we had a meeting in Singapore and the best Singapore said, maybe about 30, 40% of our children have a good control. And a professor from China said, 85% of them have below 6.5. I am willing to send all my children to your country. If we can manage it, I will be very happy. It's impossible almost. So members of cluster 3 experienced increase in A1C over 18 months of follow from an average of 8.7 to 9.6 and others once stable. That means don't get perturbed. I am not doing a good job. My children have 10, 10.5, 11. When we started CDIC, 4,000 children in India, from All India Institute to Kanyakumari, average HP1C was 10. 10 years later, look at the data that it has come down to 9. We are happy. Don't expect 8, 7, 6.5. It's all nonsense. Okay, maybe that technology is less, money is less. Let me have the best technology and lot of money, $20 billion like USA, we will do better. Look at this data. State of type 1 management outcomes from 2000, not 16, I think it is 2002, 12 to 18. And data from type 1 exchange registry demonstrate only minority of adults with youth and type 1 United States achieve ADA guides. Look at the what we had in the past. Then insulin pump, this is in spite of insulin pump use going from 57% in 2010 to 12 and 63% in 16 and 18. My friend Dash Shots showed this data and said, this is what our country, I think Dr. Banshi Sabo's meeting at that time, <laughs> right? And CGM increased from 7% to 30%. 
and A1C were lower in CGM users. Look at this chart. What does it show here? If you see here, 2011, it went to 38% CGM use. Excellent technology. Look at that. What is that, that red? Red is what you have seen in uh, 2000 to 2012. And after $20 billion, God knows what it is, what has happened. From average 8, it has gone beyond 9. So this is what United States increasing CGM pump. So don't think that, oh, patients, doctor, I'll put them on pump and it will be controlled. No, not at all, at all. It is not the pump, it is not CGMS, it is the mindset. I have seen mothers who are so intense and writing in the chart everything, they ate everything and then CGMS and then 6.8. Doctor, don't you think it should be 6.5? It is the parents and the child who drive it. It's not your money or technology. Of course, CGM and insulin pump had a better control compared to those who don't use. That is agreed. So this is what, if we cannot add the pandemic, what we have seen, COVID, everybody is interested what happened during COVID. The detection was more or less. Control was better or worse. DK frequency increased among type 1 patients during COVID surges with highest frequency among others. So less common among patients using CGM and insulin pump. Of course, it worsened, but those who are using pump and CGM probably had a less uh, variation and all. To evaluate whether diagnosis of pediatric type 1 and its complication during COVID, this results from Italy, that 53 of 68 centers responded. There was 23% reduction in new diabetes case in 2020 compared to 19. And DK was with severe DK was 44.3 in 2020 versus 36 percent. And there was no difference in the complication. So strict blood sugar control may help escape infection with SARS as well as morbidity and mortality. We had a child, 14 year old, diabetes hardly four years, and she developed kidney failure, meaning that it's not due to diabetes. Then we said, okay, we'll put her on dialysis, and then we said, wait for that. Then suddenly we get this one, sir, there is a availability of kidney and pancreas. Will you? I said, yes. I think Dr. Chitra is here. And they got 29 lakhs by crowdfunding. And by crowdfunding, we got the child dual transplant in Bangalore, both kidney and pancreas. One month later, off insulin and creatinine was 0.9, excellent. Then the kidney failed. Then we said, okay, back to dialysis. Two months later, COVID and 15 days later she died. So this is how during COVID, in spite of dual transplant, these children did not survive at all. So COVID pandemic might have altered diabetes presentation and DK severity. So preparing for third and fourth waves are different. If paradigm shift has occurred, why? It is innovation, in what? From RBS to A1C to GAD, C-peptide, zinc, point of care, monitoring from urine, or glucose meter to AGP to non-invasive, and complication retinopathy, everybody has a fundus camera, you just carry and then check 1,000 children and you can send it to a retinologist, he will do that. I think next artificial intelligence, now it only says abnormal. I am not interested. I am interested whether it can pick up maculopathy, hemorrhages, or even microangiopathy, and say there are so many microaneurysm in this area. That is what high level, what you have got is a low-hanging fruit. So you should get diagnosis. Nephropathy, from what? Creatinine, blood urea, EGFR, macroalbuminuria to microalbuminuria. New year drugs, better insulins, better delivery from syringes to pen to pump. Carb counting, unheard of. And now you see everybody talks about carb counting. I'll not go into details how successful it is, how many of your patients understand in a village from Maharashtra, carb counting and all God only knows. As for nutrition and Lastly, prevention. So these are all the strategies, if you look at it, that the New Year targets to reduce complication, biosimilar insulins, novel insulin formulation, artificial pancreas, prevention with vaccine, and introduction of immune uh, intolerance and reduction of beta cell injury. Now you talk of beta cell regeneration. One of our friends is working. How to regenerate beta cells. Already there are animal experiments where you see the beta cell have 
From a mice to human being, it's a long story. It's not that few days or months or years. Beta cell growth factors. Again, he's working on that. Can you have growth factors, the beta cell increase in size or double in number? Then stem cell derived beta cells. We know that how it is. Now we talk about telemedicine. Yes, all of us have used telemedicine, including this conference, where, oh, 5,000 people, not necessary. 100 people are here, 2,000 people can listen all over the world. We are not enamored by seeing that. Or as soon as I go, 20 patients are waiting, not necessary. Five patients may be waiting in my clinic. Unlike 30, another 20 people on telemedicine. It is true for conference clinic also. You don't have to feel insecure that in my clinic, number of patients are less. Your income has increased. Don't worry about it. Using telemedicine to manage diabetes remotely, we have all done it. And EMR, telemedicine, teleconsultation, e-consultation, SMS consultation, WhatsApp, and video consultation. And next, probably I will have hologram consultation where my 3D image of patient is there. 3D image of mine will be there in his clinic. The voice will be exactly like that. And after everything is over, still there is talking, I'll press the button, he will disintegrate, just like Ulysses you have got and all. Enough, my 20 minutes over, take another one. Because I have done 2D consultation in South Africa four years back, I said, next time I come, I want 3D consultation. It's easy. There are many modalities. All of us use telephone communication. It's useless. Why? You cannot give teleconsultation without EMR. Sir, you know I'm Nanjapa. I am from this Shalkere. Who is Nanjapa? What is his age? Who is Gaurama, pregnant, non-pregnant, postmenopausal? Better have the figure, everything, and then yes. Last time you came, this is the result now. Never do. That's why even the ICMR guidelines say never do e-consultation on WhatsApp without EMR because it does not make sense. Just like, you know, ah, how much is blood sugar? Ward number three, bed number eight. Okay, okay, 300, give 20 units. What's that? Who is that patient? Whether it's hypoglycemia, how can you do such a consultation? There are rules and regulations which show that. People with diabetes randomized to teleconsultation reported Reduce severe hypoglycemia. That's what we have seen. We have these 3,000 children monitored by 50 doctors across, and they have seen admission has come down drastically. I remember 15 years back, 80 to 100 admission to hospital, DKA or hypoglycemia, and they said, he's poor, sir, you pay the bill from your trust. It used to be lax. Not even a handful of children who are on treatment, I'm sure all of us here treating type 1, are admitted with ketosis. Maybe 20 years. First patient I saw in 1981, 20-year-old BSc graduate. He was in second year. Then he got insulin. Sir, who will marry? No, get married. Then he has children. I went to the children marriage, and he got grandchildren. Retired as a registrar. Not a single admission, 82 to 2022. No nephropathy, no retinopathy. HbA1c 6.8. So if somebody can achieve that, why not others? It's all the mindset. Of course, electronic diaries are available, determining insulin dose, blood glucose values, dietary data. Hundreds of apps are there available for an educated people. But all of our patients are not from cities having apps and all that. It's okay, you can call me, we will do it. Talk to my dietitian, social worker. So even with zero cost, they can do. These are all apps for very rich people. But educated and people, this is what my patient did. Look at this. AGP on one side, day one, day two, and food, milk, breakfast, lunch, dinner, and bolus dose 10, 8, and basal 20. Next day, milk, walking, exercise. So in one shot, I can see that child with diabetes, what is the diet intake, what is the exercise, what is the AGP, how much insulin he has taken day one. Day. Fantastic. And not developed by any app. His father was an engineer. He said, doctor, I will do for my child. I will start sending to you. So there are patients who are very, very innovative. <coughs> Monitoring diabetes from urine sugar, blood sugar, meters, CGMS, to A1C. Now we are not even talking the time in range, time above range, time <coughs> below range. So this is how, I don't think any of you have seen this dextrose sticks. Then Ames glucose meter, 1985 Allende Institute. So take out that one strip and then put the blood, wash it, two minutes, dry that, put it there. And, go, and plug it there also. It's not battery operated. 
So go from one bed to the other. It will take two hours. By then, the breakfast time is over because there are 30 patients. From that technology to here, because some of you who are seeing today are lucky to be born in 80s and 90s, so you might not have seen this. And all of you have seen this AGP flash monitor and how it will give you 24 hours, this one. So managing glucose variables, counting cups, correcting boluses, these are all the problems. This is what they say, whether type 1, whether older or younger, or pregnancy type 1. Today, this is what less than 4% of the time below range and less than 25% above range. You can achieve it when you have got an insulin pump in that. So this is how monitoring pumps have changed. But from regular insulin 2019, 20, three times. said, sir, it was much better control when they were taking three times. Then Lent came, they thought one dose is good enough. Then premix came, worst, lot of our type 1 diabetic day, premix twice a day, it will never be controlled. Then basal bolus concept, from animal insulin to human insulin to analog, and pumps, open loop, closed loop, artificial pancreas, 780G. From glass syringes, boil that, take out with that, dry it, and then take. And these needles were steel needles like that. Disposable syringe, pen, pumps, what not. So this is what Minimed 780, the latest one, and the Guardian sensor, and by Bluetooth you can have this data. The mother sitting at home knows what is happening to the child. Doctor sitting at the clinic also can see that. Not only that, the, unlike previous one, 780G, suppose the child forgets to take insulin, then every five minutes the boluses are given. And your carb count is never 100% correct. It may be 50% correct. You do carb counting, and still the blood sugar goes up at 120. Every five minutes it gives boluses, and it starts coming down. See, this is how where an artificial pancreas-like closed-loop system works. Bolus is delivered automatically. Then you have got how sensor talks to the pump, and the pump will infuse that much, and you can use that data, and I can see sitting at home what is happening to the child. Oh, my child is going into hypoglycemia, hyperglycemia. So this is how a study was done, 157 patients here and there, and then 97. Those who were on the previous pump, where you don't have a closed loop with 780G compared to others, you can see you can come up to range from 68 multiple dose to 76.4% can be in the range. Hypoglycemia is less than 2.2 .2 or even some 0.7, and hyperglycemia it can come down to 4.1. This is only possible because the insulin pump, how technology has changed. From HbA1c to TIR, or you take both, it is comprehensive. Of course, the last few things about world insulins, I have been part of phase one, phase two study of Tregopil, now phase three is going on. Is it working? Yes, because some of the children have got hypoglycemia when they take this over. Ultimately, if you have nasal insulin or oral insulin three times, five times, whenever you take a snack, plus one bolus, I think the life of a child will be better. Two things they are worried. Doctor, I don't want to prick my child for doing blood sugar, non-invasive method. I don't want to prick my child to give insulin. If that is possible, I think that will be greatest. No doctor, I have not come here for treatment. Somebody told me you are going to cure diabetes. I have read all over internet. If you are going to cure, I am going to here. Otherwise, I am going out 10 minutes. He already comes with that view. Maybe you are not aware. There is a cure for diabetes I have read. These are the people who come. And of course, we have to tell them, convince them that it is not simple, though research is going on. We have not yet reached a stage where islet transplant can be done to everybody and without immunosuppression. My goal is, if we can do it, and without immunosuppression, what we have today, or even steroids, a simple one, probably it will be better. Then vaccines. There are five types of autoantigen, all of you know, including tetraspasmin 7, which is very mild, insignificant. So this is what that Swedish GAD vaccination trail, outcome of a phase two safety efficacy trail with diamid for preservation of beta cell. GAD 65 has demonstrated efficacy in slowing decline of C-peptide after a sustacal load, and it proposes a novel first-in-class therapy for slowing down the progress, right? Maybe a therapeutic option. Then the 
fighting environmental factors, developing vaccine, we targeting coaxin, uh, coxsackie viruses, because this is one of the commonest one people have tried. But don't run away with the impression that these are all the ultimate. Still, we are in an evolving phase. Vaccines have recently shown potential to combat that coxsackie virus B infection and may be used as a new therapeutic strategy to prevent, reduce the risk of type 1 diabetes. But the problem is, what point? Every child, or those who are more predisposed, or those who have antibodies, we don't know yet. The last thing is epigenetics, regulation of type 1. All of you know what is epigenetics, how environmental factors will have an impact on the genes, and that is carried over that. Type 1 has increased several fold over the past half century. Hundreds of explanations, preventing factors, and factors are predisposable, camel, milk, so on, blah, blah, and other things, and infection. These are all hypotheses. Such a short time indicates involvement of environmental factors, you exclude genetic factors. Genes have seen. Epigenetics modification influence pathogens of type 1, and drugs may be available to prevent this epigenetic phenomena. We don't know, we have to wait for it. To conclude my talk, the factors that predict development of early comorbidities complication in youth onset diabetes and contribution of epigenetics and others, these are all changing. And effective strategy to reduce and treat obesity in both forms of diabetes for type 2 diabetes, not type 1. Drugs treatment technology that prevents slow or reverse disease progression. It is still probably a dream that has not come true. Long-term impact of disease on quality of life, reproductive health, and offspring of young adults. If tomorrow, we all say in slogan, no child should die with diabetes. Every year, with all that one or two children die with diabetes, in spite of all this. And we tell parents, the quality and quantity of life of type 1 diabetic should be and will be as good as ours. These are all slogans, nice to hear. But have we realized that we tell all these things that tomorrow vaccine will come, it will be cured, beta cell, blah, blah. At least give a hope. But at least in our lifetime, next one or two decades, all these things become a reality. Primary prevention of type 1, if it is 100%. 100% complications can be prevented. And 100% type 1 diabetes can be cured. Those who are already there, huge. That is what our dream. I hope all of us will work towards that. And one day that goal will be realized. Thank you for your attention. Once again, I thank the organizers.